Welcome to the vision, Because the View Isn't Enough. This is our vision spotlight, our very first episode, episode <laughs> with Bruce Mason from Community Church in Calhoun. Yes. Um, we got a few things. We're just going to ask him some questions um, so we can get to know him a little bit better. You can get to know him. It looks like we've been interrupted or something. All right, so you can get to know him a little bit better if you don't know him. Uh, there it goes. I'm going to turn my volume down. All right, we got six people on here already. We'll give them a little bit of time to get on here because most of the time when we have the first six, it's usually all of us here. <laughs> so I am going to go ahead, uh, Bruce, and share it to your page. Okay. Hang with us. Julie's on. Julie Shutt is watching. Mm -hmm. We got one besides mm -hmm. just us. Tanya Randolph Basham, where you at? You're supposed to be here. <laughs> <laughs> and call so you there and, and share it to his page. You know more about that than I do. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I want Bruce to tell us, I asked him before we started how long he'd been in the ministry, and he told me 20 years. And so one of the questions that I asked him was, I know that things have changed as far as worship over that 20 years. And so I just want him to go ahead and I want to introduce him, Bruce Mason. He's got a wife that he's been married to for how long? Oh, uh, hey, 1990, 23 night. years. Okay. Her name's Dana. <laughs> yes. I've not had the privilege of actually meeting her uh, face to face, sweetie. but I will say this. She's amazing. From <laughs> everything that he says on Facebook about her. She is an yeah. amazing woman. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, you can tell that she has to be. Because he, <laughs> seriously, she, he brags on her all the time, yeah. and I think that's awesome. Yeah. He posted something the other day. She was working at the church, Gardening, I think, something. gardening. And he posted, yeah. this is what he, this is the treasure he has or something. That yeah. And I thought, that is awesome. John wouldn't have said that about me. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I thought that was awesome, that they've been married for 23 years. Yes. And how many kids do you have? Three. Three kids, boys, yeah. girls. Two girls and one boy. Oh my goodness! And do you have grandbaby? I know you got yeah. grandbaby. Two girls and one boy. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna um, do a little bit of spying on your Facebook, but I thought, well, I'll just wait That's and ask him. Right. I'll just wait and ask him. But I see you post pictures about your grandbabies, so yes. I know I know you got grandbabies, and they say you love grandbabies more than you do your kids. Absolutely. I don't know if that yeah, <laughs> makes a difference. I think that comes with maturity. I don't have any grandbabies yet. I'm waiting for Sierra, God to send Sierra her Prince Charming Same. and then she's <laughs> gonna have me some grandbabies. But I'd like for you to just kind of tell us your journey. Um, even when you first got to know the Lord and when your call, when he made that call on your life and what that was like. Well, uh, Again, Ray, I, being a military child, we, we moved a lot. Um, started out in Germany. I, I think it was one of some of my earliest uh, memories as we lived in Germany. Got to meet Mr. Roper oh, from Three's Company. Really? Yes. Oh, God. But it doesn't really count because I was five, so oh, it, yeah. it, it counts. counts. It counts. Come and knock on our door. <laughs> well, my mom got mad at me because that was our only claim to fame, and, and I had our fuller. <laughs> picture and I took it to show and tell one day I, 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 and I don't you. know what happened to it. You lost but, it. Oh, I'm impressed. So, I am because um, I love this mm -hmm. But uh, so we moved around a lot and um, a lot of the time is bouncing back and forth between Ohio County, McLean County, and Muhlenberg County. Okay. And uh, so most of uh, my, my childhood, uh, our church was mom reading the Bible to us and then 
around 13 or so we got we moved back to uh, Livermore and and we joined a church there and and that's where I felt like I was called I was about 13 At years 13 old years I, I old. felt I felt the calling of the Lord on my life I didn't know what that looked like I just knew what it looked <laughs> it <was> like <laughs> If I'd have known ministry was more than standing behind the pulpit Come talking, on. I probably wouldn't have pursued it. Um, right, yeah. Because as soon as you say yes, hell takes notice. That's right. That's true. Um, I agree. So, yes. um, Amen. But yeah, around 13, um, I knew I was called. I would say maybe about 21-ish. No, um, it was around 2001. Uh, my pastor at the time asked me what I felt called to do, and uh, I told him I felt like I was one. I, I felt like preaching was my thing, um, which I wish I would have paid attention in school. I probably wouldn't be as uh, clumsy with my words. However, um, oh, I think you've been fine. I don't think there's been a problem. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> but but around around 2001, my pastor asked me what I, I felt like I was. To do, and I told him preaching, and maybe about a month later, he said, "You're preaching next week." <laughs> and, like uh, and so, and, and the thing was, is we were in an organization where it was like five churches coming together. Oh my goodness! And I had it was a bunch of us younger ministers that had, and we had, we all had ten minutes apiece. That was the ten longest <laughs> minutes of my entire life. And so. Um, but I remember grabbing the mic when it was my turn, and the mic was just sitting there. The mic was, was moving my hand, so... Um, but anyway, from there, it was... Uh, and, and to give my wife some props, uh, back then, I remember um, I wanted to be a part of the worship team. So I got on the worship team, uh, or, or before I got on the worship team, I wanted to do a Philip Craig and Dean song. Oh, um, I love Philip Craig and Dean. And so uh, I think it was Crucified with Christ. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's song. a good yeah. song. And so I get up there, and, and my wife, before I got up there, I love you maybe if you're watching, but I got up there, and she encouraged me by saying, do not embarrass me. <laughs> I don't know if that's she was great. afraid of me calling her out or if she was afraid. Of, the way I took that's it is like, I'm fixing to mess this up <laughs> real bad. But um, so she and I got married in 1999. Here we are 23 years later awesome. in the ministry. We've been in ministry uh, 2000, September 15, 2013. Well, oh, wow. and she has a call on her life too. When you're when you're married to a minister, and I'm not, okay, but <laughs> when, you're, when you're married to a minister, I am watching my face. <laughs> <laughs> when you're married to a minister, you're part of that ministry yeah. automatically. I mean, that's just your part of it. You deal with the same issues that they do. And a lot of times, I know from being a pastor's daughter, that a lot of times, you know, if I'd had a different pastor, I might have responded different, you know, mm -hmm. because that was my dad, too. Yeah. So yeah. at times in the church, you didn't really have a dad. You had just a pastor, and you kind of got not necessarily pushed to the side, but you were you felt second and in the background absolutely a lot yeah. of times and more was expected i think and that's why i applaud my wife so much and my kids because they sacrifice more than i do mm -hmm. yeah and and not only that but that's one of the reasons why i i praise it yeah. that i give her you know god giving honor where honor is due that's right is because she does so much behind the scenes yeah she that, may not get recognized that basically is is while she's doing all this work behind the scenes, she's basically just turning the camera to me. Yeah, y'all gonna get me emotional. No, <laughs> that's good. Hey, that's, I that's got chills. That's Holy Spirit. And so, yeah, and that's, so it's that's being blessed. Yeah. It, and it's and it is. understanding. It, that. And again, that's giving honor to our team as well. Yeah. Because I I see I see church is like a baseball game. Mm. Uh, you get you get the pitcher. They they call it a no hit. Uh, 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 no hit. No hitter. Yeah. No hitter. Yeah. Thank you. They call it no hitter. The pitcher throws the ball, but the team done all the work. The team's doing all. Yeah. They're the Come one on. catching. Yes. They're good. the one get, getting people out. They're the one running the hardest to try to make sure yeah. that things are happening. And so that's yes. 
it's I good. I see the, <laughs> and I'm just going to say this because this is what came to my mind, but I see the humbleness of Paul in you explaining that because Paul was just in it for Jesus. He wasn't in it for uh, being recognized. He realized that he needed other people to do what Jesus wanted yeah. to do. He put all of his dependence in Christ. Absolutely. And he did not necessarily want to be in the spotlight. He was in the spotlight, but he didn't want to be in the spotlight. Yeah. He wanted other people to have the same recognition that he had. He wanted them to know Jesus. So yeah. I just kind of, when you said that, I was thinking, man, that sounds like a lot of Paul's yeah. personality there. And Paul's a powerhouse. So. <laughs> and I think you're a powerhouse. Absolutely. I really do. Oh, um, I, Paul did I, preach until someone fell out of the window. <laughs> that was like, terrible, right? But he went back down and got yeah. back. Yeah. Crazy. But here's the thing. <laughs> I won't ever be sitting in a window so I <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I wanted to go into because the first message that I ever um, heard you preach was, I think it was Hebrews 12 and 1, I looked it up, and it was us running the race. Yeah, that was so and good. And that we had a cloud of witnesses that was cheering us on, and we were, we've got a, they were passing the baton to us. And I remember thinking, so because you made a statement that for them to receive the promise, we've got to follow through. Mm -hmm. Right. We're part of that promise. Right. And I can remember sitting there, and it was at Steve Mack's church, yeah. and they were having a youth thing, and he was preaching. It was the first time I'd ever heard the name Bruce Mason. That's how Jordan got his name. It's true. <laughs> and uh, I can remember, uh, I, I remember feeling like. Sorry, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, well, he's had worse nicknames than that. Um, I can remember, I felt like I was going to explode because I remembered. You cannot give up. Yeah. No matter how much yeah. you want to, somebody's dependent on you. Absolutely. And you cannot be up. That makes, you can't give up. That makes us all a part mm -hmm. of this. Yeah. Like you said, we're all a team. We're responsible. We're yeah. responsible for that. Yeah. And I can remember that had an impact on me. Mm -hmm. And I just, I was so thankful for that because it was a revelation yeah. to me. I'd heard that preach, but probably not in that no, never like manner that. like that. And it made an impact on me. Yeah. And I loved it, and I couldn't wait till the next time I could hear you preach. <laughs> <laughs> well, the high writer of Hebrews is uh, persecuting the church, uh, and it was so bad. And I don't know if you've heard this or not, but I think I may have illustrated it um, at Merle Travis Center one time. But but he was actually wrapping Christians in linen and hanging them in his his garden. And catching them no, on fire. No. Mama spoke he would, on this other he would day. use he would use them as lamps. Yep, Mama spoke on this yeah. the other day. To yeah. to to illuminate his roses at night. <laughs> and this is what the church see. We think that we're we're, we're persecuted, persecuted because yeah. because our rents laid yep. or because the boss got mad at us the other day <laughs> hey, come on. or true. because the kids are acting up and we're thinking that the devil's out to get us when they're they're running for their lives. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so Hebrews is being written during a time that they're, the church is about ready to fold up shop and quit. Yeah. Um, and so this is what the writer of Hebrews is explaining to them. It's like, guys, you don't understand. Yeah. yeah. You might want to, but you can't. You can't. That's right. You don't, you don't have the privilege of giving up after all the all of the, yeah. the church history has gone through. And after to, after yes. all that Isaiah has done and David has done and everything. That's true. Everybody has put, put their part in. And now that they give it to you, you're ready to quit. Yeah, you yeah. you don't have the right to quit. Yeah. Yeah. This is not an opportunity. This is not God didn't give us the. As I heard one preacher say, you he said he said you mean you mean to tell me that we could say tell God no, <laughs> like 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 as if we had the we we were the bosses of our own destiny. Oh, goodness. When when God God is yeah, God is still God. Yes. God is still God. And, and you know, and, and we, we think that we have, we have options, but Jonah didn't have options. No, mm -hmm. no, um, no, no, no. Mary, he thought God he didn't, did. God didn't get, exactly. <laughs> How'd that work out for him? As I always say, his, his free will met free willy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and God didn't ask Mary her permission. No. no. Mm -mm. Amos said, I was neither a prophet nor the son of a prophet, and God took me. Yeah. yeah. I was minding my own. I was tending my father's sheep. God showed up and took me. Yeah. yeah. He didn't say, yeah. is it 
all right? Are you good with this? <laughs> Elijah comes up behind Elisha, smacks Elisha with the mantle. And, and it's like Elijah didn't even have a choice. This is now that, that, that power, I feel, of, that, that anointing <laughs> fell on him right there at yeah. that moment. And he, he grabbed his mule, sacrificed his mule right yeah. there on the plow and said, let's go. Let's go. Yeah. And Jesus said, "Once you put your hand to the plow, don't turn you back. Don't look back. That's right. There's no quitting's not an option. Yeah. It's not Where an else would we go? Yeah, that's that that's That's exactly what that Peter is. said. Yeah. Where would I go? You have the words of life. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Yeah. That's good stuff. See, I'm even when it, even when I don't understand, stuff. and even when it gets hard, where else am I going to go? That's yeah. a, it, I, and I think that you said this before. There, it's, I've seen too much, and I've felt too much, and I know too much yeah. to ever even what it looks like and. Our family, you know, we've all been through so much, but there's no other option. If we don't have him, we really would be up the creek. We don't have nothing. Well, I've said a lot in situations, if God can't fix it, yeah. I can't do anything about it. So yeah. my only option is to trust him and yeah. walk with him and understand that my faith and my ability is only in yeah. him. Absolutely. And if I can't put my trust in him, then I'm already done. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. So if he can't do it, Nobody can. Amen. It's true. I mean, that's an old cheer yeah. for basketball <laughs> games, but, but that's the truth. Yeah, they, have a, he, it, they have a song now that says, if God don't do it, it just won't get done. Well, that's the truth. <laughs> that's the truth. We need to believe that. I think that's, yeah. I think that's an issue, and we'll get into the church and maybe some discipleship of what is the church lacking mm -hmm. in today's society. What are we missing? We're missing some things. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of it is understanding the righteousness, understanding that if, if we do not put faith in him and the redemptive work of Calvary, with our faith, yeah. we have to believe that he is. Well, see, I, th I think, and I, I don't mean to cut you off. No, no, you, that's fine. I think, I think where, where we go wrong <laughs> is we're spending so much time trying to be saved. Come on. <laughs> that we don't put any time in in being the church. Oh, that's good. And so a, a whole entire time we're begging God, please, please forgive me. Please forgive yeah. me. Please Come forgive on. me. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. And God said, obedience oh is better God. than sacrifice. Would you please get up and do what I called you to do? Yes. Yeah. Because everything that the every time that the enemy brings something against us, it's true. Yep. It's good stuff. the enemy doesn't come against Bruce. Mm -mm. Come he comes against why in. Bruce is here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And in. so he's, he's all, he, he attacks, yeah. he tries to get you uh, distracted yeah. with trying to be saved, yeah. trying to be good enough. Come on. You'll never be good enough. No. Nobody will ever be good nope. enough. That's the reason. If Jesus, if, if we could have been good enough, no, God could have crucified somebody other than Jesus. Right. And that's right. what I told everybody. Somebody if you think you're all that in a bag of chips. You're 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 thank you should be thankful that God didn't put you on the cross. Yeah. yeah. And so anyway, uh, sorry about that. I, I had a had an episode. <clears throat> I'm back. I'm back. Um, <laughs> but and so the enemy the enemy is just trying to stop God in you. Yes. Yeah. Because okay, so, so God God gave man dominion over the earth. Yep. Yeah. Um, God told them, be fruitful, multiply, uh, subdue the earth, uh, have dominion and subdue the earth. Dominion and God's gifts and callings are without repentance. Mm -hmm. yep. And so God, 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 on the day of Pentecost, God poured himself out on, on the church because God yes. are in the earth. But he gave man dominion. dominion. Yeah. That's right. So he, he, he gets in you so he can do what he needs to do in the earth because you have dominion. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Because That's once good. a king makes a decree, yeah. Yeah, degree. It's, can't be. It's, it's done. He can't change it. Exactly. But he so can't he make a loophole. <laughs> but, he can. but he can provide. But he can provide. There is the ram in the bush. But that's the truth. And I've never looked at that. That is so good. So, yeah. so what we're what our job is of, of the church is to go and preach the gospel into all the world. It's the great commission. Yeah. Be make disciples. What is what does discipleship look like? And, and someone had sent me the question about discipleship. What 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 do we need to do? How do I, I don't think I don't think necessarily 
that we need to disciple more people to know more about the Bible because we have more access to the Word than at any ever. time yes. in history yeah. ever. We're we're yeah. good at knowing, but we're terrible at doing. doing. Yeah. And and we're not we we go to church, but we ain't being it. Come on. Oh, that's good. Uh, that's my that's my, my Nelson Creek just came out right there. <laughs> <laughs> and so. And so what would it look like? So, so here, here's the disciples. The disciples are going around and, and they're looking for opportunity. As Paul said, I, I look for, for common ground with everybody I meet so that I can share Christ. Yeah. How about yeah. that game just so, the other just night? Just a place to bring it up. Just so, yeah. Yeah. And, so, and, and so you got the disciples. The disciples spent 30 years without, a, without a, the New Testament. Mark didn't come until 30 years after Christ right. died. And so for 30 years, they were the Bible. Yeah, they walked around and they good. did yes. what they saw. Yeah, that's good. Rather oh, than yeah. just going around and, and preaching, what well, Jesus did Come this, on. Jesus that's did right. this. Yeah. In in Jesus' name, get up and walk. You know. And so, what would it look like? What it would what would it look like if if Jesus would show up with us to Walmart, mm. and we're 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 picking up. We thought we went there <laughs> for a sale on meat. <laughs> And then there was somebody standing there who who is devastated and broke down, and they're there for the sale on meat too. But God is making having time and chance collide. Yep. And so there's something that yep. you strike up that conversation, and all of a sudden God begins to minister yeah. at that moment. What what would happen if we get down to Walmart and somebody comes out of a wheelchair? Oh, yeah. What would happen? Because God, God, every every God is giving us opportunities to minister every day of our life, going to work, whatever it is. Yeah. We yeah. are ambassadors of Christ. Yes. No matter what, and, and and if you're and if you're an ambassador, you're at work. You're getting paid to be an ambassador of Christ. Right. How good is that? You think you're? <laughs> and, and, I'm going on. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. no, no, no. It's good stuff. <laughs> yeah, there's a. It's feeding me. Like yeah. I. I I'm yeah. thinking I'm going to Walmart. Tonight. I'm, I'm, I'm like, it. if somebody's I'm, there for the meat that's on sale, and I'm just telling about Jesus. Like, I'm going to work tomorrow. I'm going to tell everybody. What if everything just wait we did on was on purpose to glorify God? Absolutely, because you are purpose. That's yeah. right. You're Stacy. That's right. That's right. That but you're a word from God. God. And I think what it is is what yeah, we. That's right. And like you said, we get caught up in trying so hard to be saved so that we do. Instead of just being what we already are, and then out of that being, we do. Because Christ already paid the price. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, we're going to make mistakes, but that's what the blood's for. Yeah. And it's not to take advantage. Song, that's not to take advantage of God's blood. <laughs> yeah. But no. the blood is there in case we make a mistake. God didn't. God. God knew we was going to mess up after the cross. Yeah. He knew we was. And so God poured the blood out. And and so, but but the point is, we're saved. Now do something with it. Yeah. yeah. Rather than rather than just sitting back and begging God, please God, please God, forgive me. <laughs> and 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 you know the enemy is like, it's cool. We don't have to mess with them right now because, because they're, they're tore so up, <laughs> thinking, <laughs> thinking that any second yeah. now they're going to hell. Yeah, that's yeah. right. When when Jesus that's died right. on the cross, the, the the power of the cross is a whole lot more is more powerful than we give it credit yes. for. Yes, mm -hmm. we just talked about that tonight that we underestimate the blood of Jesus. Absolutely, and what it did yeah. for us. And what it calls us to be. From yes. And so we handcuff ourselves trying to own the deed to our own salvation. Mm -hmm. Dude. But mm -hmm. Jesus has got That's that good. Deed. We can't that have it. That's good. We can't right. have the deed. <laughs> Jesus he paid for it. it. He's the one that bought it. He That's keeps true. the deed. That's good. And so we're here we are begging God, forgive us, God, forgive us, God, forgive us. <laughs> he said, I've already forgiven you. Would you please do what I asked you to yeah. do? Yes. <laughs> well, Dane Moeller, I watched a video yesterday of that Dan Moeller, I don't know if you know who that is, but he's real good. He's a bomb dude. Um, but he talked about how it's the the way that seems right to a man, it means, well, if this is what we feel, we think is right. If we feel guilty and we feel that way, that seems right to us because of what we've done and what we've experienced. And so what happens is we believe that lie and then the, just left my head. <laughs> Every bit of it just left my head. It's okay. I know. And then the enemy comes right back and says, Shame I told again. you. Yeah. He, he's we believe, he, he accuses us, <laughs> and, and we believe it, and then our fruit shows what we believe, how we believed, because as a man thinks, so shall he be. And, and then our fruit, reveals what we you produce believe. that fruit 
and then we're accused again, and it's just a never-ending cycle. And that's cycle. what he does. He, yeah. he accuses us. What he does is he tempts us, or he puts in the, us in the position to fail, and mm -hmm. we allow that, but then he becomes the accuser of what he's used against us. Right. That's what he does. And Absolutely. then we lose who we are in Christ when he does that. Yep. At some point, we have to recognize who we are. Mm -hmm. It's the identity of who yep. we are. And when we realize that, then everything <clears throat> else, the discipleship, the, it comes. Well, just okay. your faith will become when we realize what we did for us. And that was on that Dan Muller uh, message that I watched yesterday. When I realized exactly what he did for mm -hmm. me. I want to please him. Yeah, absolutely. When we understand the depth of the cross and the blood, yeah, we cannot stay on this side of it. But when we understand that, we'll want to please him. It won't be a matter of us getting up and saying, I need forgiveness, I need forgiveness, please forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. It will be, I'm like we've talked before, I'm in right relationship and just go with it. Well, just go with and it. And we have, a, that is relationship with him when we're saying for him, but it's not the relationship that he wants. We're talking to him, but he's like, shut up, I've got other things that I want to tell you. <laughs> like, I don't want just to. do, like you just said, do, just, just do, do what like, I said. I can remember when the vision, and I've taught this before, and I won't linger too long on it, but I can remember for the first time, that's probably the first time in my life that I have just answered yes mm -hmm. when he gave me that, when he said, this is what I want you to do. And he laid it out before me, and I could see every, it's the same thing he did with this. I, I could see everything just like he wanted. And I'm not a person, my family can tell you, I don't, it has to be set before me and already completed before I can see it. I'm not a visionary, or I wasn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me correct that. But when he, when he actually came to me, and it was so intimate when he came to me, it was just me and him. And, and he just laid it out. I could see it in my mind's eye of how it was going to look, what it was going to be. He gave me the names of the people that were going to be involved. And for the first time probably ever in my life, I just said, okay. And did it. When we know who he is, we can have the confidence to be who we are. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I'm thankful. For so that, as a, I as 50, so as a pastor, years. like, how does that? Because I know when I first started hearing from the Holy Spirit, but then you struggle with, is that me or is that him? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How do you just? And I finally got tired. And I was like, okay, if it don't go against this word or his character, I'm just going to do just become yeah. a yes woman, and that has you know been a whirlwind. So how was that when you first had that encounter? I guess of just hearing from Holy Spirit, realizing He's talking to you. Did you have a moment that? Of that, of doubt that it was you or him, or how does that look? And like going forward, even the viewers that's watching and going, I think it might be him, or might how? What does that look like as far as? Well, number one, if it's if you hear something, um, and you don't want to do it, it's probably God. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, I don't want to. But. Do it. But initially, there was the, there was that excitement and that that uh, that passion, that that run, that that drive, until you got there, yeah. and then the nerves set in, yeah. and then you're like, then you start questioning, and that's that's the beautiful thing of God's grace because yeah. when you question, you're basically saying God's not, I'm not enough, yeah. and then God said that's cool because I am, yeah, 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 that's that's good. Good. and that's that's what I yeah. told our church the other day is yeah, is good. God. Is we all, and you've all heard it said before, if God used perfect people, he wouldn't have anybody to use. Really? And so, and the reason for that being is because God wants the glory. Yeah. And if, if I can go out there and do it all in and of myself, yeah. then yeah. God doesn't, That's right. it, even, even the son, Jesus Christ himself, he said, don't pay attention to yeah. me. Yeah. The words that I speak, I speak not of myself, but the father who dwells in me That's he right. does the works right. yeah and so mm -hmm. it's always trying to point back to god i don't believe that samson was ripped and had biceps and triceps and and a six pack or eight pack or i, I think barney he looked more like barney fight i think he was so strong <laughs> yeah and why do i uh, why do i say that i say that because they said what's the source of your strength they didn't oh, know that's true if he yeah. was ripped they, they would have never know. asked him that's the question. Right. Yeah, they would have never thought about that. And so, and that's the point. Yeah. In, in Jesus, Paul said, I prayed three times 
to get rid of this thing. And God said, my grace is sufficient for you. Most gladly will I glory in my infirmities for when I am weak, then I am strong. And so in other words, what Paul is saying, Paul is saying in that situation, they'll see me in all of my frailty and know that everything that happens Mm -hmm. wasn't me. And so that's that's the beautiful yeah, thing yeah, about it, because it, and that's why I that's why I said yes when you said because I always got to say it's not me, it's not me, it's not me. I don't have to be good. He's good He's already. Good. That's right. And so that's good. I think that's with any of us. If we ever get within ourselves and think we got it, yeah, we're headed for. Fall. You're in trouble. That's yeah. right. You're yeah. in trouble. Proverbs tells us yeah. that. You're gonna fall <laughs> down on your face. And Reinhard Monkey said, "God." God comforts the afflicted and then afflicts the comforted. <laughs> <laughs> don't get too comfortable because God don't want you there. Amen. Jeez. Oh, my gosh. Amen. I think we've answered. Is anybody else? We got uh, Terry and Peggy just came in, and we got Carol and Marianne over there on the couch. Do y'all have any questions? What kind of coffee do you want? <laughs> Something I that won't keep her. me up but very delicious. I told him that was anything. I told him that was anything. Yeah. I told you I might have decaf. Just some decaf caramel something. <laughs> they can do it. They can do it. It's good stuff. I don't know if Chris, Chris takes me out. I don't know if he wanted to say it out loud or what, but it, it seemed like it was a good thing. He said, a man or a woman with an encounter is not at the mercy of one with an argument. So say that again. A man or a woman with an encounter is not at the mercy of one That's with Chris an argument. Hello, Chris. Hi, oh, Chris. Hey, Pastor. <laughs> That's good. Uh, let's see. There was, oh, Carol wanted you to go a little bit deeper into the message on uh, the puzzle pieces. And what that looked like for the unity of churches or something like the body of Christ, wasn't it? How was that, Mama? <laughs> she just said she'd like for him to oh, expand a little bit on trusting God with the pieces. Oh. I don't it, know how much more you could expand on it's, that. that. It's night. so easy to say, but not so easy to do. Don't even get me started. I, I know. As I was telling uh, at Bible study last night, there's a lot of things that, and, and a lot of the pastors out there who may be listening could uh, could verify this, and you all have stood behind the pulpit and say this. Um, a lot of the things that I say uh, behind the pulpit, I speak from the experience that I had. Mm-hmm. I had one, one lady uh, come to me. She was mad because I spoke on an experience that she was having. And she said, who told you my business? I was like, <laughs> I'm, a lot of the times that I go behind the pulpit, I'm preaching to Bruce. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm telling, I tell, I tell everybody, this is a therapy session that I'm trying to talk me to myself <laughs> through. And, and so, um, That's what I do a lot. <laughs> but, I've either experienced it, and or the the messages that I don't like preaching are the ones I haven't experienced because I don't want to experience it. I don't want to. You don't want to. Uh, and so, um, trusting God with the pieces is not as easy as it should be. But if we look back over our lives, it should be easier with each piece <laughs> because. God did really good with that last piece. Yeah. And that last piece, I thought. You feel like this piece is going to kill you. But the beautiful thing is, is this is just a piece of the puzzle. It's not yeah, the it's end. Not the end. That's it's not. It, and so with each piece we hand him, it should be so much easier because he does good with every one of them. Yeah. And, and every time. And, and not only that, but it's the beauty for ashes situation. Absolutely. Like, where yep. you think, where you think that this is, as Job, you know, my, I'm, I'm chasing a rabbit. Go for it. Where did, where did Job get his ashes from? Every morning, Job got up and sacrificed for his kids. Hmm. And when he, when when, when they came and God took his herds. The wind blew and killed his family. Job went and sat in his side. Yeah. 
this is this is my relationship. This is all I've given to you. This is all I've ever known. I've loved yeah. you with everything that I have, and God gave Him beauty for His actions. Yeah, that's yeah. good. And so good. the the longer we live, it should be so much. It should be. So again, here I am. I'm saying yeah, yeah, something. I, I know, but I'm, you know, why can't we grasp that though? I mean, why is it so hard for us to grasp? I know how far He's brought me in my life. I know the miracles that he's performed. I know the things that he's put together in my life and the things that he's done for me. Why is it still hard sometimes to trust in that? Because I found him faithful every single every time. time. So what is it that I'm lacking? Is it the eyes that I I think that's the, it's just it's that, unbelief in some areas. that said, I believe, believe help but my help my unbelief. Is that what it is? You think that's unbelief? Because I should believe him by now. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, just well, I, I don't think it's unbelief. unbelief. Seriously, and I say that I, but we all, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I think that's something we all deal with. We we are good, and then let something happen, yeah. and we go right back to that. God, I, think we take, I don't think, I think we, we doubt take our that he, eye off Jesus. I don't think Hebrews that we 12. doubt he can do it. I know he can. It's, it's the can will. He, will he do it for me? Yeah, that's, that's a lot for that's, a lot of That's Christians. the, I know it's you will, or I know you can, but will you? And to be honest with you, a lot of the times we're, we're afraid, like, like in a situation, like you feel like you're in a, in a, a season of loss, and, and you're praying to not lose, and you're afraid that God's will is for you to lose. Yes. I was going to say, is it just happening in a season? Because I feel like we had like a quarter. I feel like I've been here for like a lot of years. <laughs> and so a lot of times, we, it's not that we don't trust God. It's we trust we trust him that he's going to take it away. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, I, that's what, and that's one of those things. Is I, that was my fear is that God wants me to be miserable. It was like, you want me to be miserable. <laughs> you just want me to be upset all the time. <laughs> of course, after you get out of that pity party, you realize but it's I not just, true. I, but I question that about myself. Why do I not, why is that not my first initial thought is to say, God's got this. God's got this. I can trust him. Because I know I can trust him. Yeah. But sometimes in situations, the panic always sets in first instead of the faith in action. And I just wonder why we do that. Why I, maybe it's a question I need to talk to Jesus about. Tanya raised her hand up. She's like, yes. In the comments, she's like, yes. I want to, I want to interject something is because sometimes I feel like our pain is leading us to our purpose. Um, <laughs> because. I ain't talking <clears> to him either. I'm saying I ain't We had, <laughs> we have a lady in our church. She was, she is diagnosed stage four cancer. They, the doctors told her there's no sense in doing anything. It's, it's going to kill you. Um, they said, at best, you may have a year. But God <laughs> got involved. Yeah. And then she would get sick. And then she would get better. And then she would get sick. And then she would get better. And it, it just kept on going like that. And, and she still, that was eight years ago when she was supposed to have died. <laughs> In a year. And she's cancer free. Yay. Yeah. And, and so, but the point is, is she's like, Pastor, why am I always sick? I said, because every time you go to the hospital, you preach. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I said, sis, you ain't doing no good in, in, at home, yeah. sitting on your couch, yeah. watching The Price is Right. <laughs> Last time I was there, she was watching the prices right now. But, and so her pain keeps leading her to her purpose. Yeah. I said, you know what? If you'd shut up, God would probably take you. But you can't shut up. No. Where else would I go? What she goes straight to her doctor and she tells her doctor, I don't trust you. I trust God through you. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And and so I was like, that's why you sit here because every time you go that that's your that's your church that's where you pastor yeah. that's where you lead people to christ that's where and exactly. so there's so many doctors that sit there and scratch their heads because they're trying to figure out how are you still here yeah that's overcoming yeah. by the blood of the lamb and the word of her testimony mm -hmm. yeah and love my 
Yeah. Absolutely. That's, that's, yeah, good. that's good. That's good stuff. Tony said I was in agreement with what was said. Oh, okay. that was good. I'm glad you're in agreement because you should have been here. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've covered a lot of this, except for Sear did have a question. I know Arianne and him, I look back on our text and she said, what's the role? How was that? What was the role? purpose mm -hmm. taking it outside the walls mm -hmm. um, Paul said that our coming together is for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry yeah. again it goes back to we're, we're stuck inside of a building uh, I'm, I'm going to say I'm going to be a pastor or whatever <laughs> we, we come to church to get our band-aids for our boo-boos and then we go home and get more boo-boos to come back to get more band-aids <laughs> it's just a vicious cycle okay. and when what you should do is take your scars outside the building and tell Aww. everybody how God healed it. Yeah, yeah. amen. That's good. It's and true. the role and the purpose of the church is to be it. <laughs> to be, it. Be, it. Be, <laughs> be you doers be it. Yeah. of the word and yeah. not hearers right. only. Again, we have so many theologians sitting in our pews that they haven't done nothing with it. Absolutely. Oh, that's true. Uh, so what good is the word if you're not going to work it? Right. Yeah. That's right. I can yeah. know all the word I want to, but if I'm not putting it to use, it's of no avail. That's right. Well, that's does my question look really, really dumb? No, it does <laughs> not. She wants to know what you would say to someone that's wanting to dive deep into the word. Where do they begin? I have a really hard time reading my Bible, like a really hard time. And I'm Holy Spirit is revealing to me kind of why. There was a season in my life where any time I was spent with God was uncomfortable because I was afraid he was going to make me miserable. And so he's revealing to me why, but it's just one of those things that I've learned. I'm just going to have to do it. It's just going to have to throw everything. So how, what, where do I don't even know how to, because I feel like I end up in the same place over and over again. In order to dive deep, you have to know where you're diving. Mm -hmm. if, it, it doesn't, I mean, just to say open up your Bible. Why are you opening up your Bible? What are you looking for? What's, mm -hmm. what, and, and as I've said to our church, the majority of what we Because revelation doesn't come without deposit. Come on. Yeah. yeah. And so you have to. There, there was there was one time I messed up, and and I, I asked God. I said, God, what does it mean to be righteous? You know, I hear about righteousness. Uh, raised in a holiness church, I hear about holiness. What what does it really look like? And then I, I was working at a factory in Owensboro, and and uh, something. It seemed like the machine broke down. This person's mad at me. This is going on. This is happening. And everybody, and I was just so frustrated. I remember busting, I was going, I was going to lunch, and I, I slammed open the double doors, and God said, blessed are the peacemakers. Oh. I said, now is not the time, Jesus. Now <laughs> is not the time. And I remembered that person that was being mean to me for whatever reason. I don't know why they were, they were getting on to me or whatever. And God said, blessed are those who are persecuted for my name's sake. Mm. And so that, it, it's the deposit. It, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't read that that, that morning, mm -hmm. but I had had it deposited. Okay. And so that came out. Yeah. And so as everybody's like, what do I read? What do I read? I always tell the new believers, go straight to the Gospels. Don't do anything else mm -hmm. until you're done with the Gospels. <laughs> if you don't read the Gospels, the rest of it ain't going to make any sense. No, it's not. Um, yeah. As a, book, as a matter of fact, if you're going to read Hebrews, you better start with Leviticus because yeah. it ain't going to make any sense. Uh, Hebrew, and actually, matter of fact, read <laughs> Hebrews, then read Leviticus. Yeah. <laughs> I like Hebrews. I do like Hebrews. And so I can't tell you specifically where to start. All I know is get in it and let God start pulling revelation yeah. out of it because yeah. revelation is going to come day by day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, as That's true. That's true. It's good. That's true. It's very good. Mary Ann had made the statement a long time ago, and it stuck with me. She said, if you want to know more about him, if you want to know his character, start with the four Gospels. That will tell you who he is. Mm -hmm. And um, and she was right, because I started that. Yep. And I'm like, Sarah, I've never been one that's just, you know, Amy can dive into the Word, and she could just, re it's like it jumps off the page. It, it does. It's at awesome. Her. It hadn't always. But but I can also <laughs> say that I said to Sarah the other day, we were talking, and I said, you know, I don't know other than Holy Spirit and the indwelling in me 
because I will give word that I didn't I've, know. I'm yeah. like, I didn't know I knew that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm but like, I got to go back and make sure that he's in there. The so living, he's living in us. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. That stayed with me and I was able to give that. Yeah. You know, and I asked Jamie Clemens one time, I said, do you, do you ever say something to say and they come back and ask you and you're like, I don't remember saying that. Mm-hmm. He said, yes, you will do that because it's not you speaking. It's Holy Spirit mm-hmm. speaking. Absolutely. So you just go with that yeah. and let that flow. And I'm learning. Mm-hmm. I am learning at 52 years old. I'm learning. I've been saved since I was nine years yep. old, but not always had relationship with Jesus and, and understand that Holy Spirit, what he wants to do in our lives and what he wants us to present to other people. So anybody else have any questions? I think that could. We're going back to that relationship of the change in worship. Yes, yes. Um, Worship, and and I know what you're what you're getting at. Um, in in the many years that I've been there, I've went through the hymns, I've went through the two thousands, and and on and on and on. <laughs> mm-hmm. But um, the music has changed, the, the style has changed. <laughs> the message is the same. But but the worship is is been consistent all the way yeah. from the time that God breathed into Adam's, because worship is is a relationship. We call it a worship service, but not everybody's worshiping. That's right. They might be clapping. They might be singing with, along yeah. with the lyrics. Yeah. But worship is when you pour yourself out yeah. and you open yourself up. Um, you know, and, and, and I've, I just want to... Wanna... I've seen so many people... Uh, posting and asking questions about lights and smoke and they've turned the church into a oh, recently a, uh, a, war, a a concert and and the thing the thing is is and, and they're talking about how the, the the praise team are performing yeah now there might be somebody on the team that's performing that's right but you don't know their heart that's right, that's right. That's right. and you don't know but but everybody else and, and all of our worship is totally different. Like, like one lady, she sits on the back pew and she she bawls her eyes out. Yeah. yeah. Another guy taps his foot, yeah. mm-hmm. and and another person is running around the church, <laughs> creating an atmosphere of whirlwind, whatever you want to call it. Force and field. <laughs> you got you got all of these people demonstrating in a different way, but but the worship is just as pure, no matter how it comes. Yeah. But as far as the way that you, the style has changed, I think, I think, see, they 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 say that that every everything changes every every decade, like like the whole entire world moves, and we're trying to hold hold everything in the church back. Yeah. yeah. I have I have one guy that I worked with. He goes, "What do you think about this?" Was in the early two thousands when when Pillar was real big and. You might not know who Pillar is, but, never heard Pillar. Um, <laughs> but it was a rock and roll. It was a rock and roll uh, Christian group, and uh, he goes, "What do you think about this rock and roll music?" And I was like, "Well, as long and and so I think that's one thing that we need to understand. It's not being seeker sensitive, but being aware. You're you're pulling. You're you're trying to get them out of a hell." And set them down and say, "Be quiet! Don't move! Don't breathe! Stop blinking! Don't do this! Don't do that! You got to do this! You got to do this! You can't have this! You can't have yes. that! You can't do that!" And and you're you're trying to say, "I'm yep. I'm reaching you with the gospel, but you're going to have to get it the way I'll give it to you." That's right. right. Yeah. You got to do it my way. Yeah. yeah. The way that I was saved. The way yeah. that God did it for yeah. me. And so anyway, so there's there's a, everybody has a heart song. Everybody has a song that's ministering to what their soul is saying and what they're going mm-hmm. through, what they're dealing with. Some people might might be absolutely uh, <laughs> I mean they played it on ninety six STO, they played yep. it on WBKR, they played it on this channel, this channel. I am sick and tired. But there's one guy 
every time he hears it, there's a that's tear that rolls down. Right. You know why? Because that's what his heart is saying. That's, that's right. right. That's my that's soul right. song. Yeah. I cannot wait for that moment when he calls my name. Yeah. And so we got to understand that everybody has something that we've got to minister to them on their level. Because if we don't minister to them on their level, then we're not ministering at all. Yeah, that's right. And I think we can, I yeah. was thinking, we were at a, one of the singings that they were at, and I was sitting beside my dad, and they were singing, Oh, How He Loves Us. Oh, I had and that I can on video. remember sitting there, because we've had a lot of people, and my husband's one of them. He's not a contemporary, he says he's not, a contemporary, he likes country gospel or southern gospel. Yeah. He's grown accustomed to it, and he, he's okay with it. But we were sitting there at the service, and they were singing, Oh, How He Loves Us. And my 70, at that time, 71-year-old mm -hmm. dad said, he would have been, no, he, it would, when we were singing, he would have been 70, 77, 78. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah. I, mean, I was thinking about mom mm -hmm. 72. He would, he would have been about 77, 78, and he was sitting there singing every word of that song. Yeah. And I'm thinking, at 70-something years old, yeah. he's relating to that song. He may not can remember what medicine he's supposed to take, but he's memorized those words. Yeah. Because the the you know, words, the music sounds different, sing. the yeah. tempo is different than I'll Fly Away or Amazing Grace, but the message is still the same. I heard one preacher, you, you all heard. Yeah. Tommy Tenney's dad, TFT. Yeah. I was listening to a uh, message that he preached. He called The Bow in My Hand. And, and it was based on how a generation of preachers were coming up and the older generation was was offended at the style of the younger generation and Tommy Tenney or TF Tenney stood up and he preached the bow in my hand he said I don't care what their arrow looks like as yeah. long as they're using the same bow <laughs> yeah yeah he said yeah. they can shoot their arrow however they want to as long that's as they're good. using the same bow that's yeah. good that's good yeah. true that's good yeah I don't think we have any questions. I think we over, I overdone it. No, no absolutely not. not. That's, That's so good. good. Yeah, it's real good. Everybody's watching. How do you test that, like pleasing or satisfying the older generation with the younger generation and their preference and how they like worship? How do you test that in one church? We, we attempted to start off with hymnals and then... Um, roll into <laughs> a more contemporary service um, but it's really hard if, if the older generation is not getting involved in the service like if, if they want if they want hymnals and I, and I, I love it all yeah mm -hmm. there's not one genre out right. there That's that right. I do not like I love it all and so uh, you know I can go from rap to <laughs> whatever <laughs> don't ask me to rap but I want to do it um, <laughs> But to be, to be truthful, what we need, we don't need people singing songs that they're not feeling. Yeah. Um, and so if the generation that, that needs I'll Fly Away, we need them to lead that. Yeah. We, don't need them, we don't need them in the pews hanging out and yes. watching because we need someone who feels that uh, yeah. to sing it. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. makes a because, whole lot of sense. Because yeah. what good would it if you cannot stand? I'll fly, uh, if you can't not stand, I can only imagine and it would do it. no yeah. good to yeah. ask you to sing it. That's all right. Yeah. But what I need is someone to pour their self out. We're supposed to be leading in worship. Yeah, that's good. And so yeah. I need someone pouring themselves out because I can't follow someone who's not passionate about it. That's right. right. That's good. And so you get you get them in there and get them involved in that worship service and let them pour themselves. And, and could you? I'm just. That's probably that's Chad, good. That's probably Chad's heart. on there. He's watching. So let them, let them, let them They're get probably, up there. Let them lead like, that song. Let yes. them pour Don't themselves force out me to play and allow that, yeah. and allow the congregation to get behind that. Yeah. Because it, it's hard not to follow a worshiper. Yeah. Right. Even yes. if it's a song you ain't liking, you still digging their worship. Oh yeah, well, I, no, that's there's, true. I, I think there's many times. Me and Terry are great worshipers. I was I raised on Southern Gospel. That's the only thing that we, you know, hymnals and Southern Gospel. And if I'm, if somebody, I don't always sing it, but like I can be in my car and hear it, and I'm like, yep, I love that. Yeah. But as far, like, I'll follow what's being, like you said, follow being led. That's really good. I like that. Yeah, that's I good. like that idea in the church. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, case in point, it's, uh, 
we, our worship leader back years ago uh, wanted to do. Um, it's your breath and my life. Yeah. Yes. I heard that on the song, and I'm like, well, that's that's a good driving down the road song. <laughs> and then we and then we sang it, yeah. and the worship yeah. kicked in. Yes. And I'm like, my God, this is amazing. Ask yes. Cameron about that song. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what song was it? Great are you, Lord. That's I Cameron's favorite that. song. I, to sing. That's one of my favorite. Yeah, yeah. Anything else? Tonight, All hearts and minds cleared. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming. So I will. I will just throw this in here just for extra little kicks. But so my heart obviously is for unity and not conformity. Absolutely. It's not. I'm not trying to. We're to conform to His image, and that's it. And so, what is that? It's very difficult. I'll tell you that. <laughs> he already <laughs> knows this. <laughs> uh, you know, because of that, the, the, I guess the obstacles with that is. Radical. I've seen way worse <laughs> or way, bit, way more radical than what we even do. But so. I know that initially 12, 13, whatever, how long ago it was when I first had my encounter and I was just hungry and needed more. I was introduced to some women that had come from the Greenville United Methodist Church. I ended up, you know, out <laughs> in the basement floor, you know, with all these prima proper <laughs> women. And, but there were some women from California and they had prayed and just confirmed some stuff that I had been praying. But I could watch them worship and be like, I don't want that. Like, you know, but... It was enough to say, God, if that is you, and if yeah. that is what you want me to encounter with you, then I need to I need to encounter that. Show me, lead me. And so my thought, even with because we know we don't need another Amy, <laughs> but it is for everybody to have that encounter, you know, with what that looks like to be in a relationship with Holy Spirit. Whatever that looks like, I need people, just like say, I need people to do their role and what yeah. God, God has created them to do. Absolutely. Not to better Amy. I, there's no go in that. Like, there's no personal, but just the unity and what that looks like from the favor of God to flow from that. Just yeah. not in our county. I want it to pour out. I want it because I want community there, you know. But what, as far as unity in the body of Christ, what does that look like? I know we're going to have to overcome fear of oh well that ain't how we've always done it or but I don't know what that looks like to draw it in other than just lifting him high you know there's the scripture yeah. says, but what does that look like with unity well our our logo if you'll notice in our we're logo, trying to get a motto it was yeah. trying to is is the all of us capitalized except for the I and then our motto is I must decrease oh that's good because mm -hmm. this is not about it's not about me myself and I absolutely. This is, all, we all play a part. Yeah. Uh, t the scripture talks about fitly joined together. Uh -huh. One's the hand, one's the eye, one's the ear, yeah. one's the foot. One's the, what do you mean you can't show up? You know, you're the foot. If you don't show up, right. we go nowhere. We need, we, and yeah. so, and, and it's been said over, over and over again. Some of the times we go to the church for us, but most of the times the church, or, or some of the times you need the church, but most of the times the church needs you. Mm -hmm. And so um, yeah. it's getting people to understand, you know, you play a role in this. Yes. And as we're yeah. talking about the run part or whatever, you, you have you have to you have to pull your your weight. You have to do your part. Um, and it is scary. Yeah. And um, and it's some a lot of the times it's not fun. <laughs> um, but because a lot of the times we're sowing. But when that harvest comes, yeah. <laughs> and so it, here's here's the crazy thing is, and I'm gonna throw this out there. Maybe this is just a word for the Lord for, for someone. What if you stepping out and doing what God called you to do is the reason why your prayer hasn't been answered for ten years? <laughs> and God is waiting for you to be obedient for that one moment. <laughs> that one moment can change your life. Amen. That's good. Huh. That's but right. but as far as it's it's always been ten percent of the people do ninety percent of the work, yeah. and and so yeah. just getting people to figure out what their role is and, <laughs> yes. and turning them loose. Well, you just want them to live a life of field. Do you In think Christ. that it is fear? 
Absolutely. Do you think that a lot of this fear? So. I believe so. Fear of change, fear of other people's opinions. I, mean, I think fear is Fear good. of failure. Yeah. 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 Fear of thinking that you're going to step out, I'm going to fall on my face. Yeah. And, but what if you don't? <laughs> yeah. What if, what if it goes really well and you find out who you really are, are and why you is. showed up on this planet? Yeah. What's the worst you know? thing you could do? And here's fail. the thing is, if, is, if yeah. God, if God's, if, G, if the cross, the only purpose of the cross was to save us, then he should have took us out after he saved us. Come on. That's but good. he left said us that's here good. Justin said because good. there's yeah. something to do. Yeah. That's yeah, good. That's good. <laughs> that is good. Yep. 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 Good. Oh, you're fine. No, you're fine. <laughs> Stop doing that. I just want to make sure everybody's got their questions yeah. answered. <laughs> that's, and that's good. That's, that's perfect. perfect. Yeah, I that's thought good. It was awesome. I think, I think Holy S- awesome. Holy Spirit definitely does what He needs to do. Yeah. He says what He needs to do. We got to work on the signal. Judy Bandy says it's weak tonight. Keeps freezing. I think it might be speed because we're in a different. It might we're be. using different know. mics and stuff like that. Um, well, that don't Aretha Mason. That's, that sister? that's my aunt cousin. But your aunt cousin? <laughs> I got one of them too. Well, she's watching and she's hearted. <laughs> she does the use, right? She I love you, Aretha. Yeah. Yeah, so I thought. And Dana. We lo- I here. love Aretha. We didn't talk about how good you are, Dana. <laughs> this man thinks you're the bomb diggity. Uh, I was going to look to see if there's anything else before we I've wrap been, it up. I've been looking. Me and Tanya had talked. Me and Tanya had talked today about blessed are peacemakers. Mm-hmm. Not always my strong point, but you know it is what it is. Anybody with social media does not have a peacemaker <laughs> strong point. <laughs> you have to pray through just to get off of it without saying something the Holy Ghost don't want you to oh, say. I know. <laughs> had to switch around we were going to have you i think i had asked you originally to come in may May. and then he had something going on tonight that he felt like he couldn't miss Mm -hmm. and so so i'll just see if bruce will switch and you so graciously said yes even though you may have had reservations about it (laughs) but you did an awesome job and And his church will be at revival sunday night leading worship they're the bomb they are they are the bomb bomb. this This sunday night that's what i was going to ask you when we first talked about being called to preach because a lot of preachers run doesn't sound like to me that you were running from that but you were accepting the call that he laid on your life I, I did until he told me I had a one week to get ready for a message for 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to run, but I had nowhere to go. Yeah, no, I <laughs> well, I, I kind of thought you were going to say you tried to be the worship leader because I know you, you work in the worship on the worship team, too. So I thought he's going to say that the Lord called him into the ministry and he tried to be a worship leader and that didn't work. And then he tried because that's the story you he hear from just, a lot of ministers. He just does both. But he just, <laughs> he just dove in. Yeah. So that's a good thing. I'm uh, just going to make a few announcements. Um, the 25th, which is next Monday, will be our next Vision Live. And we will have Autumn Poocher with us. Um, it's more like of a self-examination, I think, is what it will be. She's got a, a powerful testimony. Uh, she was in, I put this on the Facebook, on Facebook, I think, she was in the pit. I mean, she was in the pit, She's and God the just reached down and just pulled her right out of all that muck and mire, set her on a solid foundation, her and her husband, Zach, both. We're talking drug addiction, um, so many different things, and I'm going to let her get into it. I, I text her, and I said, so what are you willing to discuss? And she said, whatever you want to. You know, I'm an open She's book. Awesome. And she's got some things that she's been through, and it's, so they don't want to miss that. You want to tune in to see that. That's the 25th at 7 p.m., uh, the next live with Autumn Kutcher. And I just want to tell Bruce, thank you yes. for answering. Thank you. All. And saying yes. <laughs> he's one of ours it. now. Like yeah, he's just yeah. Ours. We'll probably get him back on here. Uh, we might have. A, <laughs> he, he's kind of become a, what is that, uh, like my tech guy or whatever. <laughs> we might have. We might be able to have data. <laughs> graphic design. Guy. Yeah, graphic yeah, design. He's my graphic design. design. We might pastor's have to wife. have. We may have one with the pastor pastor's wife. Lives. Oh, that'd be really good. That would good. be awesome. Yeah. You talk to her about that. Okay. She's, She's on her now. Pray about it. Pray about that. 
Uh, but I, I do appreciate you coming. Thank you I appreciate so much, that. And so we, we will let you go for tonight. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you next time. <laughs>